Hi there, Jason here for the Hagbayon channel and the TMS Talks. Uh, I recently posted a video of me hiking on higher elevation and we said that it's fun to be there not only for social distancing and not only for the fresh air in the sights but also for, for the philosophy of it because when you are in a spot like that you could, you could uh, look at our existence in perspective with detachment and become, we become objective in looking at our uh, lives. What we didn't know was that I encountered uh, trouble while, while I was there because um, to get up that hill I had to pass by uh, a, a, a deserted uh, compound, a deserted compound. And um, when uh, I passed by I even called out for people to come out but no one came out, not even dogs. But when I was already up there, I already uh, took a video, I even talked to you, and I already uh, took photos. I noticed down, when I looked down, that three, three big dogs were trying to get up the trail. You see, the trail was really narrow, so I was worried that when when I, I tried to, uh, I, 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 I do my descent, I might come across them on the nar narrow trail and that would be a problem you know you're doing your descent we have three hostile dogs going up so it could be a problem so the first thing i did was to assess and wait uh, i hoped for the best i hope that they would not you know decide to get up the trail good thing was that they did not uh, get up the trail and they what they decided to just play on the plane jumping up and down biting each other and stuff so that was good now the problem now then was uh i had to pass by the the compound again and they were in that particular uh space so i looked for things i could use um first i looked for food that i could what bribe them uh, with but to no avail it was a day hike and i already had my lunch and um Another thing was that I wasn't carrying a full-length bolo because uh, the, the hike trail was inhabited, you know, uh, and very near a city. So I, I did not bring my full-length bolo. Uh, I did not even bring my air pistol. I did not bring my air, air pistol. Good thing was that I was carrying this guy in my EDC. I was carrying this uh pocket knife in my edc this is my uh, smith and wesson uh, border guard 10s smith and wesson border guard 10s and we said before that this has the elements of a good pocket knife because it is actually a multi-tool it has this thing we call as blast breaker it has a seatbelt cutter it has serration on the blade Serration on the blade. This particular uh, feature actually helped me today because uh, I decided I decided to cut uh, a branch. I had to use a, a thicker branch, sturdier, stronger branch, uh, so that it would uh, be more effective in warding off the dog. So I used this in cutting a branch slowly but surely, and I was able to shape it into a nice stick kind of a baston, kind of an uh, arnis baston. So I brought it down with me and a good thing, good thing, the dogs were not in a hostile mood at all. So they smelled me, they, uh, they uh, tried to come near me, but they were not hostile. So I was just telling them to, you know, relax and hush, 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 uh, things will be okay. Let me pass. I'm just passing by, you know. And uh, um, good thing they were not in a hostile mood. And good thing I carried with me a uh, pocket knife so that uh, at least I could uh, make uh, a stick, and uh, it helped uh, lift my anxiety uh, a little bit. You know, at least I had something that I could use in warding off uh, the, the the dogs. I, wa I wasn't sure if they were. Uh, stray dogs or domesticated more likely domesticated because uh, of their behavior non-hostile behavior but 
at least at least I got I got through it imagine if if they were what if they were hostile you know and I, I, I had no stick at all uh, I had no stick at all what would happen I would end up as I don't know maybe I'm dog food or <laughs> their piece of meat for that afternoon so thanks for this thanks for uh, this actual particular EDC item which is a really nice pocket knife with multi-tool capacity now the question now is the question now is is it legal to carry uh, a knife in the Philippines is it legal to carry a knife in the Philippines we said that uh, it's it's nice to carry a knife uh, like this uh, when you are going uh, hiking etc you know and uh, we even said that it's still useful to to carry a full length bolo when uh, doing said activities um, the question now is is it legal to carry a knife um, uh, laymen like us uh, must know about it especially uh, survivalists uh, people who are into prepping they must be aware of it. they should be aware or they should be appraised of the law Particularly that under our new civil code, under Article 3, ignorance of the law excuses no one from compliance therewith. Ignorantia legis non excusat. Okay. We even, I uh, know, we even have to consider jurisprudence as well. We even have to, you know, know uh, or be appraised of cases, you know, uh, uh, cases that, uh, that deal with a particular fact and cases that apply a particular law because under the same what new civil code it is considered as law as part of the law of the land the, the particular case or jurisprudence it becomes the law of the land as well so there um, um, what do we consider as as our uh, uh, reference law when we, when we talk of what blade carry Okay, as a citizen, okay, as we said, we must know because ignorance of the law excuses no one. Well, the first law we must think of is the Batas Pambansa 6, of course, enacted by the late strongman uh, President uh, Marcos. And there are so many laws that are uh, actually uh, still in effect, laws that were um, promulgated by Marcos himself as a dictator at that time as a person who was uh, exercising what uh, executive legis and legislative power uh, at that time when he was in power when he was uh, still a president and a di dictator um, even the what even the corporation code was uh, uh, promulgated by Marcos it's a good law even the what even the uh, labor code uh, was promulgated by Marcos. It's a good law. So therefore, um, apparently, uh, one redeeming factor that we can allude to Mr. Marcos was that he was a good uh, uh, legal what legal mind, uh, legal craftsman. Well, for some people, <laughs> it also led to his uh, downfall. You know. Uh, now, um, um, BP six. Uh, according to uh, the Batas Pamansa 6 or BP law, BP, BP 6 law, Batas Pamansa 6, um, it is prohibited to what? It is prohibited to carry a knife or anything bladed or anything uh, you can use as a weapon outside of your residence. It is prohibited. But there are two exceptions. There are two exceptions. It is prohibited unless, you know, unless the carry is uh, related or, or part of one's livelihood. Okay, part of one's livelihood. Okay, another exception is that it is prohibited unless the carry is in pursuit of any lawful activity. Any lawful activity. So there, for example, you are a what? You are... Uh, uh, a barber, uh, um, a chef, uh, maybe a police officer uh, or a, s a soldier. Um, you are a, a, a farmer. Then you are 
allowed to carry because it is part of your livelihood it is part of your livelihood or for example uh, you are a hiker you will go to the wilderness or you are a bushcraft uh, aficionado uh, you will go camping you will go hunting etc um, or you will go up uh, clean up your uh, land in some other location which is not your residence you're going to your farm then you can carry uh, a particular a blade a bolo uh, because the carry is in pursuit of a lawful activity right so that's for example uh, I was hiking you know, I was off of greed for you know I was off greed and I was in the wilderness so while hiking you can carry something like this you can even carry a a bolo with you because the carry is in pursuit of a lawful activity hiking is lawful hiking is lawful now uh, BP6 is not the first it's not the first uh, blazed regulatory law in the Philippines the first one was uh, Batas Pambansa ah no it's not a BP presidential decree PD9 the first one was PD9 um, it was promulgated by President Marcos um, after he promulgated martial law after he declared martial law uh, there came with it uh, a weapons embargo a weapons embargo that was that's why people then were very much afraid uh, of their uh, of, of, of their possessing of guns etc so they had to surrender them they had to surrender the guns etc and the what the Weapons embargo included blades as well because of presidential decree 9 which said uh, in paraphrase that uh, well it's illegal to carry uh, any deadly weapon or sword or blade or knife crease etc outside of one's residence if not part of livelihood if not part of livelihood and in furtherance take note in furtherance of um, in furtherance of rebellion, insurrection, lawless violence, criminality, chaos, subversion, and public disorder. So that was the the content of uh, PD what PD nine presidential decree nine. So uh, under that law, there must be intention to what intention to possess, intention to possess the blade in. Uh, further runs of the above mentioned or, or the aforementioned uh, activities or illegal activities uh, lawless violence etc insurrection rebellion the the very evil that uh, as per uh, mr marcos the martial law was trying to what was trying to prevent oh uh, somewhat uh, it must be it must be related to a to a political crime rebellion something like that so um, many cases were filed uh, under that law but uh, most of the cases were dismissed most of the cases were dismissed or the, the accused got acquitted etc so for, for, for some smart reason Marcos uh, thought of amending the law and uh, of course he he made the penalty a little bit uh, uh, lighter, but he removed the what? He removed the second, uh, Colatilia, the in pursuit of rebellion, etc. He removed them. He, he, he instead uh, placed the uh, in pursuit of any lawful activity clause. So no need for intent to to commit rebellion, insurrection, etc. So long as you are carrying a what? You are carrying a blade outside of your residence or deadly weapon outside of your residence and you are not what? You are not a chef, okay? you are not a farmer, or if you are not in pursuit of any lawful activity, then what? Then it is illegal to carry a blade. That in essence is the... Uh, blade regulation law that we have right now which is BP BP6 
Now, will you carry a blade under that premise? Will you carry a blade under that premise? If you read the, the previous what jurisprudence on the matter, apparently, um, if the blade is actually concealed, as per PD9, because eh, in PD9, uh, the law is imagining a situation like that of the Sigaw, uh, uh, Sigaw sa Balintawak, something, uh, when the Katiponeros rose up in arms with their bolos rising up, rebellion style, you know. That's what PD9 was trying to, you know, prevent. So, uh, if you conceal, then what? No violation. So right now, uh, right now, um, apparently, if you are, um, uh, what, a good what, a good uh, or a, a good, uh, irresponsible uh, blade carrier, and you have concealment et etiquettes, then you won't have any problem. You won't have any problem. But that is the law. It's that is the law right now, and uh, it would be advisable to just what to just you know follow the law, and uh, you know be an obedient, uh, law-abiding citizen, as per uh, blade culture. You know, uh, uh, the blades have been receiving bad PR lately. Whenever they are used by by murderers and uh, robbers so it's up to us the the what the uh, law-abiding uh, uh, blade uh, enthusiasts to prove the people otherwise that we are what we are responsible we are we are not going to commit a crime etc there um that's it for now thanks for joining me and i will have more uh, episodes on blade culture and be safe and remember the pen is mightier with a blade or a sword thank you